Welcome to the video on how to do a weave weld. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a new program. I've already done that and I've named it Weave Program. If you don't recall how to write a program or to create a program, go back and watch that video first. So now the first thing we want to do is I want to record my home point. So I'm going to go to the Motion tab menu on the left. I'm going to drag a J move into my timeline. Again, air moves are going to be J moves because they're smoother, they're quicker. So I'm going to leave that in there and then I'm going to go to my robot operation tab. I'm going to bring that up. So I've recorded my home point and now I need to record my approach point. So to do that, I'm going to pull the dead man halfway down. And I don't want to end up in singularity where all J4, 5, and 6 are all lined up because I'll end up with a singularity halfway down if I leave my arm in this configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist the joints out of alignment a little bit so that doesn't happen. And then I want to go down to an approach point that's directly above my weld start but isn't going to be uh, low enough that when it moves to that point that I run into anything. So I want to make sure I'm clearing everything. So I like that point, I'm gonna record it as a J move. I'm gonna drag that into my timeline. So now I wanna keep this torch angle that I have in this work angle, and I wanna lock those in. So I'm gonna to go to translation, and I'm gonna bring the teaching weight down to about 10% there. That allows me to have a little more control when I'm down in the joint and the arm's not gonna get away from me and run into the part. So now I can pull my dead man down, and I can move down to my weld start position. Again, I'm using my contact tip to work distance of my wire there to judge where my weld start is. So there's my weld start. Now I need to minimize my robot operation tab, and I'm going to go to the arc tool menu on the left. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a weld start with motion into my timeline. Then I'm going to move on to my weld end, and let's record that one. So let's move down here. There's our weld end. Now I'm going to drag a weld end with motion into my timeline. And then next we need to do a retract point, a point that's going to force the arm to go through before it goes back to the home position. If we were just to go from a weld end back to the home, it's possible we could hit a clamp or the part. We don't want to do that. We don't want to hit the fixture or do something bad. So we want to go directly above our weld end point. So let's pull this up three or four inches so we know we're going to clear. And now I can go back to my motion menu on the left and drag another J move into the timeline. Now to go back home, I can try and guess where I was and try to move the arm back to a home position that was close to where I started. The problem with that is when I go to start the cycle again, it's going to move back to the home position and then move through the, system, through the program. I want to avoid that extra time. So I wanted to just go back to the exact point I started from, my exact home position. So the way to do that is I can drag another J move into this point right here. So I've recorded this same point in space for point five and six. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit point six and make it point one. So to do that, we're gonna select point six. And you'll notice here it says at the top of that menu, position six. So if I hit the drop down menu where the six is and I choose a one, now, position six is no longer in the menu, it's gone, and it's going to go back to position one. So now I can deselect that point, and now I have my program ready. The last thing I wanna do is set, my, set up my weld settings and my weave settings. So to do that, we'll go to point three, we're gonna select point three, and then under weld start motion, there in the center of the screen, I'm going to hit the edit icon. The edit icon is going to bring up my weld procedures that are available to me. I want to use the rapid arc uh, procedure for this, so I'm going to click on the drop down menu next to weld procedure 3 rapid arc. If I highlight the actual weld procedure, I can comment and call it something. I can choose what type of procedure it is. This is a standard procedure. Make sure that you're not on multi pass, those are only used for multi pass procedures. The next thing I want to do is go down to the mode. I can click on the change weld mode icon and I can choose from my history. I can select from a search list. Again, I can choose what material, what diameter of the wire, what mixture of gas, and then do a search and it'll give me what's available as far as weld modes in the power wave. 
And then lastly, I can enter the number directly. So I've already pulled up weld mode 13, which is for 035 uh, diameter steel wire with an argon CO2 mix. And I'm currently going to be using 9010 mix. So I'm going to go to a detailed settings page now on the left. And if I want to choose ramping, I can enable that right now. And if I want to track, I can do that by clicking on that tab right there. I'm not going to do either for this demonstration. We're actually not going to weld. But I just want to show you that those are where, that's where those settings are if you want to do those things. We can go now back to the left. We'll go down to the weld start setting. Again, we can turn on a run in so I can enable it and then use the drop down next to it. And then I have my wire feed speed settings. I'm not going to use a run in, so I'm going to minimize that and disable it. Also, towards the top right, I have I can go to the gas tab and I can set a purge or a preflow. Lastly, we'll go over to the left again. We're going to go down to our schedule list. So there are eight schedules in this weld procedure. These are eight different places I can set weld settings to call when I need them. So you'll notice the first one I've made, I've labeled it the weave, and the second one is the weave crater. The weave crater is going to be our weld end with motion that's in our timeline in our program. So we can actually edit it now rather than just edit the weave and then go back to our program, click on uh, weld end, go in here and edit it again. There's no need. Let's just save the time and edit it now. So let's go to S, uh, schedule one weave. I'm gonna hit edit. And I, I, this is where I commented it and called it weave. I've set my wire feed speed for 600 inches per minute, my trim for one, and my travel speed for 10 inches per minute. Now I have a choice of offsets. That's only for multi-pass. I'm not gonna use that. I have my weave tab. I can set my weave settings and I'll come back to that. And then again, if I'm using tracking, I can enable that by clicking this drop down menu. But I'm gonna go back to the weave tab. I'm gonna set my frequency for 10 Hertz. And my amplitude is only half of the width that I'm actually moving. This is four millimeters from center to one side. So I'm going to have a total of eight millimeters of total weave width movement. And then I'm going to set a dwell of 10th of a second on each side. Now, if I go back up to the top, I have a back button, not the one in the top left corner. That'll take us back to the program, but it's the other back button that's, so, that's just off to the left of the middle there. I'm going to click on that. And again, I want to edit my weld end setting since I'm already in here. So I'm going to click on Schedule 2 Weave Crater, and I'm going to hit Edit. I've commented it as a Weave Crater. I set my wire feed speed for half of my width of what my weld speeds were, and I set my trim for the same as one. And I don't need a travel speed because this is actual weld end. It's not going to be moving. And my delay time is usually going to be anywhere from three tenths of a second to eight tenths of a second. I have this for this particular demo. Eight tenths of a second usually seems to work the best. You'll notice that offset, weave, and track are all disabled or turned off because I don't need those for this setting. This is for the weld end. So again, now I'm going to go to the smaller back button that's in the middle there at the top. And you can see all my weave, uh, all my weld schedules there. And then lastly, we'll go back over to the left and we'll click on weld end setting. These by default are set up from the factory. These are generally good weld settings for your burn back and your wire stick. You can change these as you need to. Also at the top right, you'll notice there's a gas tab where I can set up a post flow. Now I'm ready to go back to my program. So I'm gonna hit the big back button on the top left corner. So the last thing I need to do is choose my weld procedure and my weld schedule for my weld start. So I'm going to use the drop down menu for my weld procedure and I'm going to click on weld procedure 3 rapid art. I'm going to choose weld schedule 1. That's my weave. And then you can see all of my settings. If I click on weaving, there's also the settings for the weave. So now we have that set up so we can deselect our weld start. Now we'll select point 4, our weld end. We'll choose the same weld procedure three, and then our weld schedule will be weld schedule two, the crater fill. And then you can see all the settings for that.
Now we're ready to run the program. So I'm going to deselect point four, and then I want to disable my tablet on the top right corner, and that very top right corner icon that looks like a tablet with a hand pointing to it. Now I have a tablet with a line through it, so it's disabled. So now I'm ready to run my program. Then I'm gonna pull up the play tab. Now remember, if you have the push button, start, stop buttons, you, you will have to use those. You cannot use this run button here. If I click on run, it's going to tell me that I need to use the remote settings. So I'm going to hit okay. And on your first run through a cycle, you wanna go at 50% or less because you wanna make sure that you're running at a slow speed that you're not going to hit anything. I know that this is gonna be fine because I've done this program many times, so I'm gonna turn it up to 100% override for the sake of time. And then we're going to hit the green button. And now it's going to start from the very beginning of the program. Now, if I wanted to weld, the last thing I would have done is on the very top of the screen in the middle, there's an icon for a, a welding gun. I can click on that and I can enable or disable the arc. I'm gonna keep it disabled for this demo. There's our weld end, our retract point, and back to home. And that's how you write a weave program.